Uh, next topic uh, after the femoral nerve, we have uh, femoral vessels. Uh, femoral vessels include the femoral artery and femoral vein. Starting with the femoral artery, femoral artery is the main arterial supply for the region of the thigh. Um, its origin is, it begins as a continuation of external iliac artery. Um, in this diagram, you can see that this is external iliac artery. It is itself a branch of common iliac artery, which is a branch of or one of the terminal divisions of the abdominal aorta. So external iliac artery, when it passes beneath the inguinal ligament at mid inguinal point. Now, what is mid inguinal point? Uh, mid inguinal point is the point taken midway between anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis here. Anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis. This is called the mid inguinal point. It is different from the midpoint of inguinal ligament, which is the midpoint taken in the middle of inguinal ligament between its attachments at anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle. Whereas the mid inguinal point is the point taken midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis. So, at when the uh, external iliac artery passes uh, beneath the inguinal ligament at mid inguinal point, it becomes or it is renamed simply as femoral artery. So the course of femoral artery begins uh, at mid inguinal point where external iliac artery becomes femoral artery. It lies on the swas major tendon. It lies on the swas major tendon. This is swas major muscle and it lies over its, near its tendon. And this same muscle separates the femoral artery from the underlying capsule of the hip joint. It is also at this point where one can feel the pulsation of the femoral artery as well as it can be used for catheterization. Here in this diagram, you can see that soon after the, soon after entering into the thigh, it is enclosed for some distance by a fibrous facial sheath called femoral sheath. Then it continues to run down over the anterior aspect of the thigh to enter the adductor canal. So here in this diagram, you can see the femoral artery coursing from the femoral triangle and further moving medially, andromedially in the thigh so that it finally comes to lie within the adductor canal. Um, this is the canal, region of the adductor canal. And again, we shall be covering the topic of adductor canal in detail in upcoming lectures. Also, when it reaches the adductor canal, femoral artery lies deep to sartorius muscle. Here you can see the cut end of the sartorius. And this is the remaining cut end of the sartorius. Sartorius uh, covers the 
uh, femoral artery when it comes to lie in the adductor cana. This is all about the course of the femoral artery. Femoral artery reaches the adductor hiatus where it uh, continues in the back of the knee joint as popliteal artery after it passes through the adductor hiatus and enters the popliteal region at the back of the knee joint where it again changes its name to popliteal artery. Branches of the femoral artery include some superficial branches and some deep branches. So four of its branches, they arise from the proximal part of femoral artery, its anterior aspect below the inguinal ligament. The name of those branches that immediately arise below the inguinal ligament from the anterior aspect of the femoral artery include superficial epigastric, superficial circumflex iliac, superficial external pudendal, and deep external pudendal. Some of the branches are shown in this diagram as well. Arising just immediately beneath the inguinal ligament. Another artery uh, that further arises in the region of the thigh from the femoral artery and is a very important artery and also one of the main arterial supply for the region of the thigh is deep artery of the thigh, this one. Deep artery of the thigh is a branch of femoral artery. It is also called profunda femoris artery. In the upper limb, there was profunda brachii artery. Here in the lower limb, it is profunda femoris. So do not confuse the two deep, two deep arteries of the two regions, two different regions. Other branches include the medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries. Here you can see the circumflex arteries. And this one is the deep artery of the thigh, seen to be giving off many branches in the posterior region or posterior compartment of the thigh. And these multiple branches arising from the profunda femoris artery are called perforating arteries. So this was all about femoral artery. Now let's talk about uh, femoral vein. Here in this diagram, you can see femoral vein here. It's a deep vein of lower limb. Why I mentioned deep? Because we have a superficial set of veins in the lower limb as well. Femoral vein begins as a continuation of the popliteal vein proximal to adductor hiatus. So adductor hiatus is the area where femoral artery enters the popliteal region to become the popliteal artery and popliteal vein from the popliteal region enters the anterior compartment of thigh as femoral vein. So femoral vein begins as a continuation of the popliteal vein proximal to adductor hiatus. Course of the femoral vein is that it ascends through the adductor canal, again over the anteromedial aspect of the thigh. It ascends through the adductor canal, first posterolateral, but then posterior to femoral artery. So at first, in the beginning of its course in the adductor canal, it lies posterolateral to the femoral artery. But further above, it becomes simply posterior to femoral artery. Further above, it enters the lower angle of the femoral triangle. And here it also lies posterior to femoral artery. When here, this is the region of the femoral triangle. 
when it reaches the or it further ascends through the femoral triangle it finally comes to lie on the medial side of the artery but remains lateral to a canal which is called femoral canal what is femoral canal we shall again inshallah soon cover it in our upcoming lectures so again i'm repeating the course of the femoral vein femoral vein ascends through the adductor canal first posterior lateral then posterior to femoral artery it continues to ascend through the femoral triangle where it finally comes to lie on the medial side of the femoral artery but remains lateral to femoral canal within the femoral sheath along with the femoral artery it is also enclosed by the femoral sheath uh, i mentioned earlier that the femoral vessels that is femoral artery and vein are enclosed by the femoral sheath but femoral nerve remains outside here in this diagram you can also see this is the femoral sheath enclosing the femoral vessels but femoral nerve remains outside the femoral sheath so within the femoral sheath femoral vein passes under the inguinal ligament and continues as external iliac vein and continues as external iliac vein here is you can see the level of the external iliac vein deep uh, um femoral vein has got four to five valves in it the tributaries of the femoral vein include corresponding vein to the deep artery of the thigh hence called deep vein of the thigh second tributary very important tributary is great septus vein and third tributary is popliteal vein itself So this is all about the femoral vessels.